my tag with a little bit of desert sand. Nice prim color. All righty. <clears throat> so we're just going to get a good base coat on here of this. So I'm just going to quickly put a second coat on here because I like the get a little better coverage on here because the first coat always kind of sinks right into the wood. So we're just going to spruce it up a little bit with a second coat. So I'm just going to clean that brush out now as I dry this the second time. So I cut a little checkered stencil for this as well. So we're just going to line that up and I'm going to use a little bit of buttermilk. You can see I already used this once. So we're just going to put some checks in the background. And I have my trusty sponge here. So let me just pull this down. So I'm just going to load my little sponge here and kind of offload it there. So that's all I'm doing with that. So I'll just line this back up and get back in the camera shot. Just wanted to show you what I was doing. For all you ladies that have not stenciled before, if you have, you know the drill. So I just have literally just a makeup sponge here and we're just going to lightly fill in those little squares. Now some of most of these squares will be covered up with our design, but I'm going to just do the whole thing anyway, just in case some peek out the side of the design. I don't want to miss any spots. So we'll just we'll just fill it all in. Just for the heck of it. We're here and we're doing it. All right. And then we'll be ready to put our design on and then you'll get to see what we are painting tonight. Okay. All right, so now we have our little checks. They're lovely. We'll give it a quick dry. It should be pretty dry. Usually when you stencil with those sponges, it doesn't uh, stay too wet. All right, so let's bring our little line drawing over here. So we have a little sheep, a little Valentine sheep. I'm going to do a little prim sheep. All right, let's just get him his tiny little surface, so... Just trying to line him up. All right, I think that's good. We'll get our graphite paper. And I have to hold it so I can get it all the way under there. There we go. So I'm just going to put our sheep on. I'm not going to put our heart on yet. I am going to put all of the outline of the sheep. And we'll get him started. The hues on there. So I'm just tracing my little drawing that I made earlier onto a tag.
All right, so we have him on there, so we'll start facing him in. All right, so we have a little bit of our buttermilk, the same color that we stenciled our little checks on with. I'm just going to start filling my little guy in here with that. So I am going to have to turn my piece a little bit every now and then. So forgive the flipping. Just filling in all the fur areas with some buttermilk. Hopefully this guy turns out pretty cute. I'm just going to go around his face. Like I said, you can see most of my checks were covered, but we have them peeking out in there behind. So we still have some showing. It was not all for naught. This gives our background a little bit of interest. I'm going to grab my smaller brush here in a second to get up in between where his ears are with this buttermilk. So I'll just grab my little liner brush and get this tiny area up in here. So I'm going to grab some black and we'll fill in his ears, face and legs. Let me give this a quick dry because I have a bad feeling I'm going to stick my big mittens into that. All right, this little, little guy happening here. So let's fill in his ears. to concentrate hard clearly sheesh I got awful quiet there for a second I have to concentrate make sure that I get where I'm supposed to be here and not go outside the lines these little tags don't take too long to, to paint up and they're cute I mean you can use them as Little hangers on gifts or you know sometimes I, I even hang them on um, you know like your cupboard door knobs or you know wherever you can hang them anywhere that's a little decoration you can even use these little tags on your tear trays some people like to decorate their tear trays 
think they would work there as well. Get this mirror filled in. Less talky, more painty. I think the more I talk, the slower I get. All right, there we go. So we'll get his face blocked in. This is always the part that, you know, the necessary part, not, not necessarily the most exciting part, but we do have to get past this part to do anything fun. So we're going to do it and get it done quick and hopefully not stick my hands in too see like that, but we'll get that on the second coat. I always manage to get my hand into some wet paint somewhere. All fixable. We will fix him up. Alrighty. Let's grab our bigger brush and make this a little bit faster. Filling in. And that's why I dry things in between because I always manage to get stuck in that wet paint somehow, some way. Kind of hard not to. It's a little surface, so. <laughs> All right. We'll move that over here. And we'll fill in his legs. Same thing with the black. We'll just get those blocked in. And then we'll put a second coat on his body. And then add our heart. Put some shading on there. we got some things to do. All right. Almost there. Okay. Let's just dry this guy real quick. Right. Okay, we're almost there. I got a little something something happening over here. Okay, let's get that second coat on his head and body. And then we can do a little bit of Shading. And we're going to shade this guy with a little bit of burnt umber. See, we're going to go over that little black smudge that I made. Get rid of my errors. our time frame oh we got lots of time yet i think we're good lots of time Okay, it's looking pretty good there. So I think that's working. All right, I see that. Actually, I'm just going to fix something. I got a little spot of water over here, and I want to get rid of that little black spot there. My eye kept going to it, and it was bugging me.
All right, so we're going to grab some burnt umber and get my angled brush out. I'm going to load my angled brush just on the end there and get it wet a little bit, tap it off on my paper towel. And I'm just going to shade around the outer edges of my head and body on the fur. I'm just going to reload as I need to. I mean, this doesn't have to be perfect. Prim paintings, in my opinion, should never be perfect. They're, the whole point of them, in my opinion, is to look a little rustic. And I love using burnt umber on prim paintings. Just dirties it up nicely, makes it look antique and that's kind of the look we're headed for. So I'm just still reloading that burnt umber. I'm going to head down here onto my sheep's body. And we'll throw some of that on there. And then... Once we get all the way around, we'll put a little shade on his face and ears. And then we can add our heart. Now you could do this a different way. You can blend this in. You don't necessarily have to shade the same way I do. Um, you know, you can blend your paint together and it still gives the same sort of look. Just depends on what your style is and what you're used to doing. So I'm going to put a little around his face and ears here as well. And there, we're starting to get a little shape in here and we're just shading around there with a little burnt umber just to give it a little bit of depth and I mean you can you know if you put your first coat on there and it's not dark enough you can just add another just spruce it on up with a second coat of shading. So true, so true. It does the shading does bring it just to a whole nother level. It doesn't. It just sort of brings it to life. So I'm going to add another little coat of shading here just to show you. You can, you know, darken that down a little bit. You know, it depends on how prim you really want this little guy to look. There's no rules. All up to you. No rules in painting. Whatever makes you happy. And when you like the finished product, it doesn't really matter how you get there. All right. So we're going to dry that quick. I'm going to grab a little bit of slate gray whilst that's drying. And we'll do his head and ears and his little legs. So we'll grab a little bit of that slate gray on my angle brush, just like I did with the burnt umber, same way. And I'm just going to shade a little bit of that on there. Not going all the way to the edge. I just kind of want to Get that little highlight on there. Same thing on his face. This is a, a pretty basic painting. I mean, this is not a scary thing to do. You can, anyone can paint this. It's pretty simple, pretty easy. 
And then we'll put a little bit on his legs, on the outer edges there. All right, we're cooking with gas. So now we can dry this and we can now bring our line drawing back over and we'll put that little heart on there and then we'll make it look Valentine-like. Ready. Well, let's line this little guy up. Looking good there. We'll put this under and transfer on our little heart, our little prim heart because it's got the nice little squared edges. Most excellent. Okay. A little crazy over here. We'll just fix that up. Just fix that up a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to base this in some slate gray first, just so that my red will pop a little better and we don't have to put coats after coats after coats of red on here. It just gives it a nice little primer base on there first. So we're going to do that. All right, we're going upside down here. And I'm going to grab my little liner brush to get into that point on the end of the heart so I don't mess it up with my bigger brush. And then we'll dry this and we'll add our red. And you could do this in any color you wanted to. I chose to do mine in red. Um, just because, I guess. I don't know why. I just did. <laughs> I just think it needed a pop of color because everything's really, you know, beigey and all right. So let's grab, I chose to use a little bit of Tuscan red. You can use any red you want. It doesn't really, you know, matter. I like the darker reds just because they do cover a little bit better. So let's get this filled in over our gray. Make sure I'm still in the camera here. All right. All right, we're still good for some time. We're here till seven. So I haven't, I think we're gonna be all right. And again, I will grab my little liner brush to get into this little point on the bottom of the heart. So that turned out like pretty bright on the first coat, which is amazing. helps when you prime under there because it really does let the reds pop like they should. So I am just going to brighten it up a little bit with a second coat and I think it should be good. I'm just going to kind of focus on the center because we're going to shade some black around the outer edge here in a second. So the edges doesn't 
it doesn't matter too much but the center yes okay so because we put that on our sheet i'm going to grab my angled brush again with some <clears throat> excuse me some of that burnt umber and i'm going to shade around the outer edge of my heart with some of that burnt umber sorry for the froggy throat i don't know where that's coming from it's not like i've talked very much today i don't know what's going on i don't know And we'll put a little bit in here and then we'll give the whole thing a good dry. So we have a little shade around the outer edge of that now. All right, so we're going to grab a little bit of black. And I'm going to shade and I don't want too much. I don't want it to be like crazy dark. Just want to get a little shade of black around the outer edge of that heart. So I did water it down quite a bit on my brush just so that it would be a little more muted than screaming black because black can kind of get away from you on your brush. It's so dark that when you're shading with it i try to water it down as much as i can because it can really kind of overtake what you're trying to achieve i just added a little bit more water on my brush especially when shading with it okay that's that and i want to do a little dry brush in the center and I chose to use some dragon fruit it's like this bright pink color I know it sounds crazy but we're gonna do it I'm just gonna dry brush a little bit of that and I'm gonna use my lunar blender um, stencil brush always works as well anything with a stiff bristle so I'm just gonna dry brush a little bit of that pinkish color in here. Just give it a little interest. all right so there we have our pink sort of and i mean you could put a second it's pretty bright from where i'm looking it doesn't look as dark on the screen but i'm not going to add a second coat to that because it's pretty bright already i'm going to get a little bit more buttermilk i want to add a little bit of stitching to my heart i'm going to do that in buttermilk my time i got 10 minutes so I'm just going to take my liner brush and just do a little stitch all the way around the outer edge of my heart. Trying not to smudge my stitches. And then the I better come at it from this side or I will stick my hand in there. Didn't trust myself. So I'm going to tie this it's going to look like it's tied around his neck so i need to put a little hole dot there and a little hole dot there and then i'm going to use my liner and let's do it upside down so i can bring it towards me i'm going to bring a 
line up like that. I did get a little wiggly on that one, but it's okay. It's okay. We're not going to sweat it. And then we'll bring one up over on this side like that. So it looks like it's tied around his neck. And then I'm going to add the ends of the little wires here. So let's bring them from the back and just kind of give them a little curl there. Bring it from behind there and just do the same on this side. We have our little wires. And then if you wanted to even take it another step further, you could put some little curly cues on your sheep. And you didn't have to, but you can. I'm going to use a little bit of desert sand here. We've got seven minutes. And we'll just add few little curly cues. Can you guys see those? They're muted with the desert sand color. I mean, you could do them in white if you wanted to. Trying to avoid my wet black there. Add a little water to my brush so they flow off of there a little better. There we go. So you could add some little curly cues to your sheep as well. And you mean you could do as many as you want. So then we got to give this guy some eyes. So I'm just going to use my, let's get some white out here. Just going to use my little stylus and just put a couple dots on there for some eyes. And that's all I'm going to put on him. Just like that. Okay. So the next thing we can do, and I mean, I'm not going to, um, this will be like a little kit that I'm going to be offering, but also you'll get the stencil, the little wood tag. Um, also, I'm going to be adding in some string and oh, this silly thing. I got to cut the top off and some beads, uh, these little beads so that you can add some beads to the top of your, of your little tag as well but I still have five minutes so maybe I can see if I can thread some beads I don't know we'll see let's try so I have a little bit of fine string here I think it only need about that much so bear with me while I'm try to knot this you know, when you want the string to just come on through. Now, we'll see if I can get the other. I don't know. You can't see what I'm doing. I'm trying to get this weeded through here. Oh, they're perfect. That wasn't as bad as I thought. So you could put a couple of these on here. You could also paint them if you wanted to. Paint them, you know, red. Like the red that on the heart. That would look cute too, but I just kind of wanted to show you what it would look like with the beads. We still got three minutes. We're cooking here. Awesome. Now I do have one other thing to tell you. And um, now, like I said, I will be offering this as a kit. If you just want to purchase the kit, that's fine. But I will be adding this as a bonus. Let me just, let me get this tied and then I'll tell my story. Tell my story. Because I have two minutes to tell it. If I can get this knot in here. All right. 
and then I'll just trim the edge. So, I mean, you could add a little bow to this as well. Let me see. You can add a little bow to that as well, but then you have something to hang it with here. So it'd be cute on a gift or something like that. So in the kit, you'll get the tag, the stencil, the line drawing, the supply list, the beads, the string. Um, but like I said, let me just pop myself up here. So like I said, um, in that little tag kit, you would get all of that. But I am going to be offering this as a bonus kit in the in the January uh, paint and palette box. So if you are signing up for the January paint and palette box, you will get this as a little extra. So I'll just show you that in the paint and palette box for January, we have this cute little skunk Valentine door hanger. That's what we're painting in the January box. So if you want to get in on this, you will get this as a little bonus. And that's all I had to say. That was my story.